welcome to What's to Eat. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show you the very best that your community has to offer in nutritious, healthy, and wonderful farm-to-table foods. Today I'm joined by a wonderful vegan chef and author to Dear World, See What I See, the wonderful Shanti. Hi, Shanti. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. It's a pleasure. pleasure to be here. My pleasure. And here I see we have phenomenal food and, uh, and ingredients. And can you talk about your ingredients here? This is one of our go-to meals. Uh -huh. I make it probably once a week. Okay. Um, just because it's, it's relatively easy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's packed with nutrition. Uh-huh. Okay. So we're going to make not tuna. Wonderful. Not tuna. Wonderful. It's two cans of chickpeas. Okay. Now, I, fresh chickpeas are better, but when you're in a rush, canned chickpeas mm. okay. is what I use. It's good. Okay. Then I put it in my processor. Okay. And okay. I uh, process it till it becomes almost like a paste. Almost, almost like a paste? And... Wow. That looks delicious. That's and, just chickpeas. And chickpeas are a phenomenal source of insoluble fiber. I'm always take it, telling my clients as well as protein. And so easy to come by. As Shanti just said, uh, it's a can of... 99 cents, 89 cents. <laughs> <laughs> and what's great about chickpeas is right. they're so versatile. Uh -huh. You can make uh, not tuna. Right. You can make hummus. You can make a chickpea curry. Right. You can make chickpea burgers. Right. And the list goes on and on for right. for chickpeas. Just chickpeas alone. And chickpeas is one of your go-tos for a plant-based eater uh -huh. because it has a lot of protein. A lot of protein. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Um, and then you're mixing it with uh, my, one of my favorites, which is cashew sour cream. Mm, looks wonderful. I soaked uh, the cashews uh -huh. because you want them to be more easily uh, uh, digested. digested. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So right. they were soaked for about five hours. Uh -huh. And then I put it in the blender with some apple cider vinegar. Right. And what I love about apple cider vinegar is it's that big word, homeostasis. <laughs> it supports the yes. homeostasis of your body. Sure it does. Now, your, your body always wants to get to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so that's what homeostasis does. Yes. yes and it does. so apple cider vinegar, a uh -huh. little shot of apple cider vinegar right. in, in your nut tuna. It also has lemon. Wonderful. Freshly squeezed lemon. Wonderful. Which is, you know, people think it's uh, an acidic uh, ingredient, but right. it's actually alkalizing. It so does. it calms your blood down to not not to be not to be so acidic. No, it balances out your pH. And a lot of people aren't aware of that. That lemon we think is citric and acidic, but when right. when metabolized it's actually alkaline, which is yeah. wonderful. And it's delicious. <laughs> so we're going to put that mm -hmm. and I believe the recipe is up for for our Wonderful. audience to try. So that's the cashew. That's the cashew sour cream. That's the combination of the cashew and the chickpeas. The chickpeas. And then Wonderful. Then we'll add three tablespoons of red onion. Red onion. Right. Also very good. Excellent fiber as well as... Uh, antioxidant. Antioxidant, antifungal. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great food. And mm. then we have my favorite, which makes this... The recipe is called Not Tuna. Mm -hmm. And people, people kind of like that, that sensation of what we grew up on. Right. We don't necessarily want tuna, right. but we want that little bit of sensation of it. Sure. So nori sure. is a seaweed. Right. Yes. That extremely healthy for you. Very healthy very, for you. Yes. Um, very healthy. So we have uh, three tablespoons of nori flakes. I put this in my Nutribullet mm -hmm. and grind it up. So it comes like, like this. Oh, interesting. You can see the texture of it, how interesting it is. So it comes in 
Uh, and large strips. Large strips, and then you I blend, I blend it down blend in it. your Nutribullet. Very interesting. And seaweed is so phenomenal as a, a, a source in helping with uh, metabolism, as well as our thermogenic potential to get our body going, um, as well as an alternate source. It has yeah. iodine yes. and tyrosine, yes. which supports the, the thyroid. Yeah, absolutely. And we know a lot of people with thyroid issues. We do. We do, and this is a so wonderful way to of have incorporating. The, to to yeah. have it in your, in your daily food is, is a wonderful. nice way. I just want to show the combination of foods here that we have, the colors and all real natural foods. And we're going okay. to add a teaspoon of salt that is the healthier version. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> the healthier okay. version of salt. And, and it, it's not, it doesn't have the iodine in it. Uh -huh. So that's why it's important to have the nori. Wonderful. And then that's wonderful. You'll stir, stir it uh, until it's combined well. And this is the nut tuna. You can look right here and show. That's the finished product after blending and mixing this wonderful and, combination and, of healthy and incorporating great everything into it. Yeah. Now. Eating plant-based seems very time-consuming to people, but you saw how quickly these this can be made. Exactly. And you can have it for lunch. You can have it for dinner. I have it for lunch. I have it for dinner. <laughs> I've yet to have it for breakfast, but it has called me. You could. You could you very could. well have it, and it's... Uh, helping our planet and helping in terms of our carbon footprint. And you've, you've said something very valuable, that it's something that clearly um, can be made very easily um, as a substitute to animal foods. Um, and it looks absolutely delicious. I can't and wait to try it. And I'm go. sure my, my crew who's working so hard can't wait to try it as well. Well incorporated. And it looks like tuna. It does. Um, it does. And it does. it'll have, with the nori in it, it gives you that little, whoa, something's kind of fishy in here, but there is no fish in it. Interesting. Very interesting. And it's a beautiful color, too, if I can show my, my viewers in terms of the color. Um, it's like a, a creamy, um, like melon color. And the consistency is very much as what you would see as tuna salad, mm -hmm. but actually a little smoother like a pate. It looks lovely. It really does. When you process it, uh -huh. you can process it so that it's a little chunky. Right. But we don't like it that way. No, we it's like wonderful. it processed well. It is. Yeah. So that it's it like wonderful. like a paste. Yeah. And uh, what I, I love about what you do, Shanti, is you just don't know one thing. You know so many things mm -hmm. of how to cook. Uh, in your book alone that you wrote, you had wonderful recipes. Um, uh, from Brussels sprouts to, you, you have to tell me how you create those chickpeas uh, that you, um, Super as a snack. easy. You can take a can. Right. And drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. I'm trying to stay away from, from oils these days. Right. So, right. Uh, but I do use a, a very little bit. Right. And then sprinkle salt on it. Uh-huh. Put it in the oven. Right. Every six minutes, it has to be turned. Interesting. Um, so at 400 degrees, in about 25, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. it has a nice little crunch, and it's done. And, it, and it's a, and a it's wonderful, done. healthy alternative to, yeah. say, uh, our processed Doritos or or popcorn um, and a wonderful sort of get in that alternate protein. It's a great snack. Yeah. 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 And it looks, like I said, it looks absolutely delicious of what we have here of this combination. So once this is all blended, so what would you say is the total time element of making this? We put the ingredients together. Um, how long do you put it in the... Uh, in the Nutribullet or um, mm. in your processor? In the processor? Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Maybe less than a minute. 
Less than a minute. Less than a minute. To mix, to have a phenomenal source of ultimate protein. This goes Vegan. in the in the Nutribill, Nutribullet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Or you can put it in your blender uh -huh. and uh, process the the nori flakes. Right. Right. Wonderful. And that takes probably 15 seconds. Right. right. Uh, chopping your onions. Mm -hmm. um, knife skills are really important. Okay. Uh, okay. A lot of people say, oh, it's too much cutting. But once you have the skills of, of learning how to chop your yeah. onion, there's yeah. special ways that you chop, that sure. you cut your onion. Sure. So that Interesting. it's quick. You can, you can chop your onion for this in less than a minute. Interesting. I certainly can't, but I'm sure you can. <laughs> because, expert because they're, skills. they're skills. Sure. And sure. once you learn these skills. Right. Right. And in, in in my cooking class, that's one of the things that, that we teach is cooking skills. Because if you don't know how to hold your knife down and chop, 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 sure. chop your parsley or or cilantro. Another wonderful food. Then sure. it becomes sure. tedious and time consuming. Yes, it does. Yes. And you not only teach about cooking skills, you also do organization, which I, I, I mean... Phenomenal. <laughs> How organized you are in terms of your appliances separately yes. from your ingredients, separate from the foods that you incorporate. And you make it seem something so valuable that people get very overwhelmed and intimidated by vegan cooking. Yes. And if you have someone talented like yourself... Um, you can learn very easily to put very healthy things together to make a substitute protein meal and one step closer to protecting our planet and helping our environment and our animals. Um, so it's very valuable. We, very we valuable. interchange vegan cooking and plant-based cooking uh -huh. because uh, plant-based cooking is something that people understand. Right. We're just using plants, right. no, no animal products right. that causes... A lot of health issues. And I was also impressed that when you showed me alternate cheeses, that uh, the flavor was quite good. Mm -hmm. And I have shared it with my patients. Nice. Those that have uh, not only looking towards vegan cooking, but um, people that are looking for dairy-free or have a lactose sensitivity, mm -hmm. that there are alternates out there that have a texture and feel. It's not very difficult to make the transition. There are wonderful... Uh, uh, cheese alternatives. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have one here okay, that we put the, the tuna mm -hmm. underneath. Right. Tuna. The knock tuna on whole grain and, bread. And okay. then okay. a slice of follow your heart cheese. Follow your heart cheese. Okay. Follow your heart cheese. Uh -huh. And then what we normally do is we Put that in the toaster oven uh -huh. and toast it so until the cheese melts. Wonderful. And then Wonderful. put some uh, tomato slices on top and right. you have a tuna melt. Wonderful. Wonderful. And this over here is something else you make. That you coleslaw. 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 Which is very using cleansing the same, and beneficial. Using the same uh, sour cream uh -huh. recipe right. that I used for the not tuna. Right. So when Wonderful. you're making this, you just make a little extra. Mm -hmm. I find that to be prepared. So I, I prepare, I squeeze uh, probably this much lemon juice uh -huh. and keep it in the fridge. Right. Because I use it a lot. Right. Wonderful. So having, having little tricks like that right. definitely helps in the kitchen. Which you teach. Yes. Which you teach. Yes. And a lot of your classes uh, make something that could be very overwhelming, so simple and, yes. and so easy to make that transition. Yes. Another way you have it here is you have it in terms of um, uh, as a salad, as a salad, where you're getting in all of the antioxidants of fresh vegetables, um, as well as something that could just be part of your your dinner meal. That's as a that's my normal lunch. That's wonderful. And make sure that, that, that I have that's a exceptional. nice and and this is the bowl that I eat it in. Also, <laughs> that is my lunch. That's, a, that's your bowl. <laughs> so. And as well, if you don't want that, you have something here which is a snack. Um, a, snack. a snack, right? Which you have as far as um, rice 
crackers, rice crackers, which are phenomenal because they're gluten free mm -hmm. and they don't have, for people that have celiac or, or gluten problems, you, you have an alternate to wheat crackers. And again, you have some not tuna, so it makes a very easy substitute protein source, easily accessible and very easily made. That's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And you also do other recipes as well that are, are absolutely wonderful. One of my go-tos yes. is my chocolate avocado pudding. Yes, yes, here. Oh my goodness, I'm sure the crew is, is getting <laughs> mouth watering here. And, um, and, and that takes... Looks so creamy. That takes maybe five minutes to prepare. Interesting, very interesting. So I interesting. put an avocado. Uh-huh. A nice ripe avocado. Right. With, and I, I usually have frozen bananas in my fridge. Mm -hmm. So when they become so ripe, right. I peel them, right. put a little bit of lemon on them so they don't turn black, right. put them in the freezer. And I make sure that I, when I put them in the bag, mm -hmm. I stand them up or else if you, if you don't stand, the, if you don't lay them out, it just becomes one big banana mess. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I like so, the way, um, excuse me, um, I like the way the texture is here as it would be as a pudding, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, thick and So creamy. it's banana, frozen banana, uh -huh. avocado, uh -huh. cacao powder, right. vanilla, mm -hmm. and maple syrup. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And you use cacao power a lot, right? Which is unadulterated form of, of cocoa uh, powder. Cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. You use that a lot. I use that a lot. You make a, a kind of ball, a nutrient ball. What is what is the name of chocolate chia balls? Ch yes, chocolate yes. chia balls. Absolutely has, wonderful. Has uh, different kinds of seeds and mm -hmm. nuts mm -hmm. and dates. And dates. dates is what keeps it together. Yeah. And I roll them up. Yeah. Put roll them in some cocoa. Right. Uh, roll them in um, coconut, mm -hmm. and you have your chocolate chia, chia balls. And you're um, you're absolutely so talented in terms of. I know when I tried the uh, the the chia balls that that you have the chia seeds, which are phenomenal fiber. They have uh, like close to fifteen grams of fiber in in serving of chia seeds when people are trying to increase fiber. And the natural source of chocolate is absolutely wonderful. You had a wonderful blend that wasn't overly sweet, but at the same time, a, a wonderful snack or, or dessert. You're, and you're so good and dates are extremely healthy for you. Yes, they are. Yeah. Whenever I have one, I always feel like something's got to be wrong with this. <laughs> And I haven't found anything wrong with yet no, you're with right. it yet because everything in it is so healthy. Yeah. You have chia seeds and almond seeds, almond almonds right. and pumpkin seeds and flax seeds. Wow! Uh -oh. Wow! Yes, yes. And it was it was very very tasty for someone who does not eat hardly any sugar just because of of uh, my makeup by having low blood sugar. Um, it was wonderful. It was a lovely blend, and you're so talented in every single solitary everything you make. And it's wonderful that you offer cooking classes so they feel less overwhelmed and, and feel that they can they could easily put this together with ease. So the total element of time is how much to make this? When you have your lemon juice prepared uh -huh. and I would say half hour tops if not less. No, that's terrific. That's ter <laughs> absolutely terrific. And, in, and, and, and what you show here as far as all the different alternatives that you can make from the, the, uh, the salad, which we have here, as well as on the sandwich, the tuna melt, which I can't wait to try, um, as well as uh, on the crackers, which are wonderful. When wonderful I became uh, plant-based 14, 14 years ago, it was not like it is today. Okay. Uh, I tried to get help from people, and people did not not know what vegan was. Mm -hmm. And today, people know what vegan is. Yeah. And there is a lot of help online on, on different recipes. Um, Besides. So having somebody to teach you. Sure. is is wonderful. I started okay. with a teacher. Did she you? was a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. And at the age of 47, yeah. I did not know 
the difference between a tablespoon and a teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassingly to say. But she taught me how to do things. Sure. And so having somebody standing next to you, holding your hand, no, mm -hmm. use this, use this, sure. makes things so much quicker. It and, sure does. And, it sure does. And like my name, Transition, transition. to Better Health. Yes, Transition to Better People Health. People are finding right. health in changing their changing their lifestyle, changing their diet to right. this kind of right. cooking. And it's one step, one moment at a time. Um, so the cooking show is here to show you a healthy fare that's in your community by very talented chefs and, uh, and people in your area. As a RD, nutritionist, so it's important to me that I'm able to show my clients there are many, many ways of eating healthy. And this is one small way of making one little step, one moment at a time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Shanti, for your time. Thank you for having me. And your, your wonderful talent and cooking skills. Good night.